to try and work out what's going on, right? Remember I said to you here at the beginning, right, there's this particular instant of time where it gets projected up and then everything else kind of follows on from that, okay? What I want to do is take that instant of time and imagine it stretching out a little bit uh, in the same way that, don't draw this, in the same way that as um, two new students and as the extension one people, extension two people looked at more recently, if I want to consider, say, a volume of a solid of revolution, right? Essentially what I'm adding up, excuse me, the, um, the formula, of course, for the volume of, this, of a solid of revolution is, can someone help me out? Let's actually start with the integral first, and then we'll, okay, so what's in there? The pi, okay, I've got an integral, so I'm going to say dx, right? This guy, this is really pi r squared h, right? Do you remember that? What I'm adding up a whole bunch of is these little cylinders, okay? But because I can't actually draw a cylinder of, you know, infinitesimally small thickness, what I do is I actually draw a, um, a cylinder that looks like it has some actual width because I can't draw anything else, okay? So in the same way, what's happening here is at a single instant of time, like as you saw, we drew it, right? After that instant, it already changes. It's no longer following that line anymore. Gravity has done something to it, which we'll talk about in a second, and has changed it. But I can't draw a single instant. So instead of drawing a single instant, I'm going to draw a single second. Here's what we're going to do. Take that, um, take that projection there, right? It's off at an angle. Draw it separately off to the side. And you can see, I need to understand there's a horizontal part of this, and a vertical part of this, right? And I want to try and tease them apart. So around this projection, okay, I'm going to draw a box. And this box, like so, <clears throat> helps me to understand and work with the horizontal and the vertical parts. Okay, so let's actually start putting some numbers on this so that we can um, uh, actually calculate what's going on. Coming back to our original graph, let's just say as an example, okay? I'm going to give you a velocity and an angle. So suppose I throw an object at the first second, right? It's going at 12 meters per second. It's just for the first second. In that, whatever direction I've thrown it in, the angle I've thrown it with from, from the um, horizontal, so this is actually an angle of inclination, we go around at 60 degrees. I've just sort of done that approximately. So when you look at this guy here, this diagram, where are each of these numbers? My 60 degrees comes up from the horizontal, like that. And that 12 meters per second over here, 12 meters per second, is over there. Okay? So this is going off in that particular direction. From here, I want to understand that 12 meters per second, part of it is going to be horizontal and part of it's going to be vertical, okay? So how do I work out which bit's which? Let's imagine that this is a whole second of motion, okay? So in 12 meters, right, sorry, in one second, it's going to travel 12 meters, okay? So this along here is actually 12. I've got an angle, and I've got a right angle here as well, so therefore all I need here is just right angle and triangle tree, right? I just need simple ratios, okay? For example, if I want to work out this guy down here, this is the horizontal change, okay? This thing happening on the bottom axis, right? What is it that relates this side of the triangle to the hypotenuse? Which ratio? Yeah, it's going to be cos 60, right? Cos 60, do you see that? So I'm going to write um, that cos 60, it's adjacent on hypotenuse, right? So that's going to be x, good morning, x dot on 12. Does that make sense? You see how I've, I've gotten that number? Cos 60 adjacent on hypotenuse, so x dot by itself is 12 times cos 60. What's cos 60 again? It's just a half, right? So this is just 6. Okay. So the horizontal part of this motion is 6 meters per second, okay, at that particular instant in time. In exactly the same way, I can work out y dot. That's this vertical change up here, right? What ratio am I going to use this time? Good, sign, we'll say y dot on 12, it's opposite on hypotenuse now, is sine 60. And sine 60, of course, is root 3 or 2, right? So this is just 6 root 3. Root 3 is about like 1.7-ish, okay? And that just corresponds to our diagram, you can see. 
this is about 1.7 times further than this. Does that make sense? So you can see um, this is going to be 6 root 3 meters a second. Okay. Uh, in exactly the same way, going from a velocity at an angle, I can work out what's happening horizontally and vertically, but I can do it in reverse as well. So let's call this one example 1. Example 2. Suppose what I know instead of this is I know what x dot and y dot are. From those, I can work out what the angle of projection is, the angle of inclination, and I can work out what the starting velocity is. So draw me a new diagram. Like this one. And if, for instance, I happen to know <coughs> through, for, for, for instance, some kind of measurement, if I know that the horizontal movement is say 15 meters per second. So this is going to be the first second of motion. It goes 15 meters that way. And then I've got a vertical change of say eight meters per second. Off of this, I can work out what angle did you fire that at? What angle did you fire that at? And for that whole you know, first second, how far is it actually moving in relation to this axis? Not just vertically, not just horizontally. So I can work out each of these independently if I want. For instance, if I wanted to know the angle first, what would I do? What ratio relates this? It's tan, isn't it? Opposite on adjacent. So I'm going to say um, tan of theta is 8 on 15. Yeah, 8 on 15. Let's deal with degrees at the moment. Uh, there's, um, there's every reason to think about radians because we're going to do some calculus here. But all I'm doing at this particular moment is I just want to know the size of this angle. And because I'm like actually measuring things and I know we're much more confident with degrees and understanding that, we'll just get this number in degrees, just like I gave it to you before. Can someone give me to just to one decimal place? 28.1. Yeah. Now, does that seem to make sense? One of the lovely things about doing things in a physical situation is you can use a sense check. Does 28.1 degrees seem like a reasonable kind of size for that angle? It does, right? It should, because when you have a look at, when you compare these two components of the motion, right? You're moving so much further along this axis here compared to the vertical axis. Most of the effort must have been thrown into the horizontal rather than the vertical. What angle would I have to throw at? So the horizontal motion and the vertical motion are exactly the same. That'd be 45 degrees, right? Because that would make this an isosceles triangle. Does that make sense? Okay, so we can work out the angle first. What do I do to work out the actual velocity? This is just Pythagoras. I've got a right angle triangle after all, okay? And 8, 15, 17, in fact, is the, um, it's, a, it's a try, that's why I picked this up. However, if it weren't such convenient numbers, if you've had like thirds or decimals or any kind that don't give you a nice number, you can actually state for me in one line, because I'm just thinking about this in a forward direction, you can just give me a one line formula for this, right? This is Pythagoras, so you would have gotten v squared. So I'm going to take a square root of what? X on the Yeah, just the squares of the two shorter sides, which in this context are the vertical and horizontal. Displacement, right? Uh, sorry, velocity rather. So that gives you the square root of 64 plus, I think I reversed my numbers, sorry. The square root of 289 is indeed 17. Okay? Right, excellent. So generally speaking, you can see we can use 10 to work out this, we can use um, Pythagoras to work out the velocity. Or, if what we had in the first place was the velocity and the angle, you can use these results here. And you notice, see how I wrote this line? This line here? This is kind of like a formula, right? And you can just kind of remember that and state that. Just like that, up here, you could write formulas for these, right? If what you wanted to get to was just x dot and y dot straight away, right? Have a look at the numbers that are the same and have a look at the numbers that are, well, the parts of it that are different. Which parts are the same? The, the 12 and the 60 degrees are the same, right? Obviously, they're both dependent on these two quantities, okay? So in this case, you had to multiply across. So really, I'm saying x dot is v, that's the 12, cos theta. Do you see that? Right? Whatever the angle of projection happens to be. And in the same way for y, y dot, it's going to be not v cos theta, but v sine theta. 
which should ring some bells, right? It should ring some bells. If you think about this point up here as existing on a circle, right, with center at the origin, what this really is, is the coordinate of a point on the circumference of the circle. X is V cos theta, Y is like, we'd usually say R cos theta and R sine theta, but here our radius is the velocity. Okay, does that make sense? And also if you were to divide them to you would get 